Uh, with that, though, let's go ahead and dive right into this Denver-Minnesota series. Um, I made a whole video about Game 5 and Game 6, uh, so I'm not going to spend too, too much time on it because I really want to get your thoughts on it. But obviously, um, we didn't get – we recorded after Game 3 or 4. I think we recorded after Game 2. We recorded on the night of Game 3. Um, and we both felt that this series was – all but wrapped up in Minnesota's favor. And uh, the Nuggets rattled two off in a row in Minnesota, go back to Denver. Now, obviously, like we just talked about in game five, Jokic has what I think was the best game of his playoff career. Um, Easily. Complete domination at all three levels, 40 points. I think it was 12 or 13 rebounds – or 12 or 13 assists, seven rebounds, no turnovers, like a perfect – game that's one of the games where i genuinely think back to all the generational big man defenders that we had um i even saw uh og from tiktok was talking about it like he was like bro matumbo alonzo morning like all of them would have got feasted on that night it would Every not single have person like, there's nobody to- on the planet of history that would have stopped yogis that night right there y'all need to really understand how absurd his offense was <clears throat> um and Going into then an elimination game back in Minnesota, they responded in the biggest way possible. And I mentioned in my video that what I love the most about what they did is that they just made a decision and a choice to be like, look, anybody but Jokic. Mm-hmm. They're showing him bodies. Um, they're double teaming him from multiple different angles. They're doubling him on the catch. Sometimes they let him get a bump down in the post and then a second body comes. I saw them try to blitz and trap him off the ball on the perimeter when he's kind of just trying to do those DHOs. They got a couple of steals um, off of them just trying to get set up into their offense. They're just trying to speed up his game or just get the ball out of his hands. And in a series where MPJ has shot really badly, Jamal Murray's been really up and down. Um, they just f- dared those guys to make shots. And when they did it, it was off to the races every single time. Um, in transition, and they got out to a there's a on a 20 0 run, I think, at one point in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, they jumped up to I think almost a 50 point lead. Mike Malone pulled the starters with like 10 or nine minutes left in the fourth. And here we are, game seven tomorrow night in Minnesota. So, how are you feeling coming out of game six? What did you like or didn't like on either side in game six? Um, and how are you feeling going into game seven in this heavyweight? bout of a of a playoff series Nah, i like the i liked a lot what i've seen from minnesota man i like like you said their uh their adjustment of just saying look <laughs> we're not gonna let Jokic do that again <laughs> we're not gonna right. let him we're not gonna let him absolutely destroy us on his own um, not to cut you off but do you know that game five was the first time he scored 40 points in a playoff game and they won yeah because every other time it's be it's out of necessity like look all right fine no one got it going i guess i'll just keep scoring 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 yeah. or they do that like i hate when people say like they let Jokic score. You don't let Jokic score, but it's like right. you live with him scoring. That's the way people should word it. I hate when they just be like, yeah, the, when you the game plan is to let Jokic score. No, because yeah. if you let him score, he'll score 100. So, right. Um, but yeah, this is the first time like legitimately he just like, I don't know, he was just in full control, bro. Like it wasn't out of, I mean, a little bit out of necessity, like, but I think he just made it a point like, look, it's not going to be we're going to try to get everyone open first or get everyone going first. It's like, no, we're going to be aggressive from the jump. And I'm we're gonna win the game that way. But I like what Minnesota did as far as just um like doubling them, saying like, look, anybody else but Jokic is gonna beat us tonight. And it ended up working. You know, what I mean, they didn't really have it going. I, I don't know what Denver shot, but it, it wasn't that good. I know that for a fact. No one else really got it going. Um, from the Denver side, it's the biggest thing too. I would say as well, besides the fact that obviously you know Jamal Murray has to get it going, Michael Porter Jr. has to get it going. Those guys have struggled. They also got basically nothing most of the game from their bench like their bench gave them absolutely nothing i think their first bench point i remember it was a christian braun dunk yeah i forgot i don't know if it was in the third or like the early fourth. i forgot what it was but they they got nothing from their bench they just didn't get anything else from anybody um so they couldn't really get anything going like i said minnesota basically used that good defense to go out and transition run a little bit you know use the athleticism to kind of you know get it going for him. Anthony Edwards, you know, he does his thing. So I just, I just like the overall game plan that they came in with, um, which makes game seven even more interesting because now you get to see how Denver is going to respond because Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, you know, Minnesota is going to make a little bit of adjustments here and there, but it's easier to make adjustments after you lose and you're 
adjusting to someone else's adjustment versus right. like preparing for all right what is mike malone gonna do now mm-hmm. to to combat us you know making you anyone else but Jokic beat us so that makes game seven a little bit more interesting and i also think that puts game seven in the in the nuggets favor a little bit obviously they're already at home they already have like the best player in the series even though anthony Edwards is playing great um but the fact that they're coming off of a loss i feel like helps them more um, because like I said, they can actually make the adjustment now and, and Minnesota is going to have to react off that. Mm-hmm. So I think overall it's going to be a great game seven. Um, Minnesota's defense is going to have to still be elite if they want to win this game. Um, Denver is going to have to find a way to, I mean, Yogi's is going to do his thing, but these other guys have to step up. Like Jamal Murray has to get in rhythm. He has to get it going at least a little bit, or you just need to get something from someone else especially if your bench is going to be like, you don't, you don't know what you're going to get from the bench at this point. Like it could be a good production. It could be absolutely nothing. So right. you don't really know. So instead of that, relying on that, you got to have at least, at least one of Jamal Murray or Michael Porter Jr. have to get it going. Yeah. Preferably Jamal Murray, because once he has it going, it makes him even more um, unguardable, I should say. Yeah. So I'm just excited. Excuse me. I'm just excited to see what adjustments coaching wise both teams really make um, and see, you know, everybody's going to have to bring their A game. You know what I mean? Like Denver, obviously, they're still favored because they're at home. So Minnesota's going to have to go in there and win again, which is tough because that would if they win this game, that means they would have to, they beat Denver three times on their home court, which is very, very tough. And it would be mm-hmm. very, very impressive. But. I mean, hey, nobody expected them to win the first two at home or on the road, I should say. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that they go in there in Denver and uh, and win in seven. But I think personally, if I'm making my pick, I mean, I, the beginning of the series, I said Nuggets in seven anyways. So I'm not going to switch up now. So I guess if I had to pick one right now, I think Nuggets pull it off. I agree. And that's what I, I said in my video. But it's really like it, it feels so much like a toss up. Um <clears throat> it's hard to really pick one way or the other, and I feel like I'm taking the cop out answer. A because yeah, I also said Nuggets and seven coming into the series, but also like just viewing this game by itself, I almost feel like I picked the Nuggets because like it's Jokic, it's the best player in the world. They're at home. I'm just gonna you you decide with that because and that's that, not bad. That, that might be the little bit to take them over the edge. Um, but you said it perfectly. Like there's I I. I think I said this too in the video I posted. Like, there's not a world where I see the Nuggets being able to win this game if that's the performance that they get from MPJ and Jamal Murray, like they got in game six. If they come out in game seven the same way, the Nuggets will be going home. Mm-hmm. One or the two, preferably both of them, need to get going a little bit. I agree right. with you that if it's Jamal, it opens up so much more of their offense because of the dynamic two man game that him and Jokic can get going. Mm-hmm. Jokic is going to get his regardless uh, because so many of his shots are coming, you know, high quality looks under the rim, and he's always going to get other guys involved. Jamal Murray needs to knock down. And a lot of the looks that he had were looks that we see him make when he gets going. He just has been so up and down. Um, I think another thing that's important here is they're going to be coming off three days rest. So obviously he's got the calf thing that's been bugging him. So that extra day of rest might play into a factor. So I think the last time they came off of three days of rest, was game four where he had a big game, if I remember correctly, game three or four. Um, mm. Or it had to been game three because they had the big, big it rest. It was three. Between, it was three. Yeah, they had the big rest going from uh, Denver to Minnesota. He had a huge right. game three. So that extra rest could play a big factor in this one. Um, so, yeah, if I have to pick, if I got to put a bet on it, I, I would bet on the Nuggets, but I'm expecting this to be – as much as this series has been so back and forth and – I. I, I've described it already as like a heavyweight fight because it feels like their teams are just throwing haymakers and responding and haymakers and responding. Like there hasn't really been a ton of close games. Like you have a lot of blowouts almost. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this one is going to be really tight down to the wire. I think even Anthony Edwards says it's going to be one of the best game sevens um, that we've ever seen. So they're, you're right, they're anticipating for it to be a dog fight. I think it's going to be that. I think that. Um, I don't think there's a way where MPJ and Jamal Murray both play this bad. I think at least one of them is going to get off. Like you said, preferably for the in the for the Nuggets' sake, if it's Jamal, I like their chances a lot more, just because of how dynamic that that opens up their offense to be. But if I'm Minnesota, I'm 
sticking with the exact same game plan, bro. Jokic doesn't see single coverage unless it's the last option. Did Anybody you, else don't have to beat us. Did you see the picture of Jokic standing in, bro? I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this man might go 60, 30, and 20, <laughs> bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. Like, I, bro, listen. Have we ever seen game seven Jokic? Ever? Oh, well, technically, since they, when they came back in the bubble against the Clippers, but yeah. that was like, Jokic was still great, but like, he wasn't since like, since he's now. been solidified best in the world, no, because, um, they had the, the run where they lost in 2020. To, to the Warriors, they didn't. I don't think they had, they had no game sevens there, and they didn't have any game sevens in their championship run last year. Mm-hmm. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I, I just think that look, we we talked about it, right? Best player in the world who's capable of taking over games and really locking in and having those like all time type performances, bro. Something about by the way, bro was standing the whole fourth. Just like mean mugging, like all right, but you know what I'm saying. This is this, somebody. Somebody said he stood like all right, finally a worthy opponent type of stance, <laughs> which is true because it's like okay, they're challenging me. Like we can actually possibly lose this. I think, like at home, I think he absolutely goes off, bro. Unless it's a t- unless it's a game where it's like Jamal Murray is like against the Lakers. Jamal Murray, we has it going where Jokic could kind of play his normal, you know, get everybody involved type of thing. I think regardless though. He's not gonna go down like we will. I guarantee you, he we don't see a stinker, and I don't think we see a Jokic like look at the stat like okay, that's a normal Jokic game. I think regardless when or lose, he's going to go absolutely off. So, and like you said, I think picking the best player in the world at home in a game seven is far from a bad strategy. You know what I mean? The bad analysis. If that's just if that's your only analysis is the reason why you pick them. That's perfectly fine because it's warranted. You know what I mean? So. I think uh, I, I'm rooting for the Timberwolves. I'm be honest. Um, I do want to see the Timberwolves win. I like Anthony Edwards. I think he's cut from that same cloth. Obviously not as good as Jokic, but I think he's also capable of having a huge game seven, even if it's on the road. I think he's built like that. And I would love to see like a Minnesota go further in the playoffs. But I mean, if I'm a betting man, I, I think Denver, you know, pulls this one off. Yeah, I agree. Either way, I'm, I'm like I'm scheduling out my day to be in here on playback watching that <laughs> live like i'm going to a ufl game probably during the back half of next patience i'm gonna be like in the game on my phone like this mm-hmm. trying to watch both but i'm back in the crib by like 6 45 ready for the seven o'clock tip off like i'm going to be locked in like i'm a Timberwolves or a nuggets fan i got no dog in this fight i'm just Man. here for, for good hoops and vibes Crack me a couple beers or something. We just gonna vibe out. I might not even have a drink or two because I've been falling asleep in some of this. They have some of these games. So I might just be locked. I might take a Red Bull. That's what I, I, might might say, I, might, I might have to throw a coffee or something in the middle. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I, if I'm taking a drink, it might be a Henny and Red Bull or something. Something to get me <laughs> wired a little bit. But no, nah, I'm not missing this for the. Nah, I'm not missing this one. You can't miss this one. Yeah, it's, that's the one. This is the. To me, this is the NBA Finals. This is game seven. Yeah, winner yeah. about to you might as well give him the trophy, man. I don't care what the Celtics do. It's, just, it's a possibility <laughs> for sure. It's a possibility. Mm-hmm.